You're watching Telecom TV from Mobile World Congress 2019 in Barcelona. I'm joined now by Constantine Polykonopoulos of VMware and Andrew Coward of Lumina Networks. Constantine, VMware has announced some news at the show that directly impacts the 5G space. Can you give me an update and explain what it means for the progress of 5G? We showcase here a number of uh, solutions and products uh, from VMware that span several parts of the telco uh, vertical. Um, I would stay. I, I would. I, I will uh, stay on the vCloud and FE, which is the market leader in uh, cloud visualization and telco infrastructure visualization. And we are uh, we announce solutions that, uh, uh, in partnership with um, Ericsson, for example, and several other uh, partners, we address pretty much every aspect of the core network in terms of um, helping the operators transform to a cloud reality. Right. Uh, we also announced um, forward-looking technology in the space of uh, network uh, slicing, uh, orchestration, um, as well as uh, service assurance, complete stack of service assurance, partnership with um, innovative, smaller uh, uh, companies like Lumina, and we'll talk more about that. Um, and, you know, it all comes together in helping our customers, the telcos, accelerate their transition into what I call the software-centric network, which is essential before we start delivering the promise of 5G. Andrew, what's the current state of the 5G market, and how are Lumina Networks and VMware collaborating to progress 5G development? Obviously all the hype at a show like this is around the handsets and around the radio, but the hard work is actually happening in the back-end infrastructure and getting the back-end infrastructure ready because that's where the, the new dollars, the new revenue will actually come from. And so getting the technology ready, getting the network ready for things like network slicing are absolutely critical. And so for us as Lumina and together with VMware, going after a problem that really hasn't been solved, like getting application placement running, getting the slices ready and having all the network infrastructure get managed through that. Remember, we're not replacing everything that's in the network when we go through this, that's just not going to happen. So what we have to do is basically say, how can we bring a technology like slicing and then make sure that the existing network's provisioned automatically. So taking advantage of MPLS and IP infrastructure uh, and making that all flow so that when applications move around and when a slice takes place, the network is dynamically driven to that. And that, until we know today, has been an unsolved problem. Constantine, network slicing is a new development in telecoms networks. How is this capability different from what we've done previously? Network slicing is like a shade of gray. There are many different definitions, many different approaches to uh, network slicing. Um, for example, um, uh, many vendors look at network slicing as one way of uh, modernizing the concept of APN, access point names, right? Um, that's not what we mean. By network slicing or virtual service networks, which is an encompassing uh, of network slicing concept and design, uh, we are attempting to basically stand up, define, orchestrate, uh, provision, and stand up a network on heterogeneous infrastructure um, in a local geography, across a nation. So think of uh, the target as thousands of clouds mesh connected and the operator wants to uh, create overlays either regionally or nationwide throughout the entire infrastructure and dedicate each slice uh, to a particular use case with guaranteed quality of service. Right? So think of all of these MVNOs for example or use case slices. Uh, living, exi existing on the same shared physical infrastructure. Right? So it's a tough problem to solve, and um, some of the major complexities um, are on the higher level tools like orchestration, as well as in the ability to connect the multiple clouds, and that's where we partner with Lumina to offer um, differentiated services right? at the level of cloud-to-cloud -cloud connection, to be able to offer best effort, as well as different levels of quality of service and therefore realize the concept of end-to-end -end virtualized infrastructure that 
uh, the use case operator feels as if they own the physical infrastructure, right? So it's a tough problem. And that's the approach we're taking. And we are very, very happy about our initial progress. And Andrew, what's the value of end-to-end -end network slicing? If you think about it, the resources that are applied across the network to deliver something, it, it's, not, it's not sufficient if you, you don't have the resources actually guaranteed and delivered. And so one of the hard problems that Constantine is talking about really is how do you actually make sure that from the base station all the way through to the central office, all the way through to the applications and services, that bandwidth is assured and reserved and, and dynamically created as that slice gets delivered. And what that means is you actually have to go touch the existing infrastructure and dynamically provision it. And that's what's been hard to do. Remember that sometimes it's one vendor like Cisco and sometimes it's Juniper or Huawei or whatever. And so you have to be able to dynamically know how to do that, but not change how the underlying slice gets delivered. And so from an end-to-end -end perspective, that really is a, you know, a game changer in, in what you can do with, with this technology. Another challenge is to uh, be able to extend the notion of VSN, or Virtual Service Networks, slash network slicing, all the way to the radio, and be able to modulate the way you allocate resource blocks over the air to particular use case overlays. Andrew, you're a strong proponent of open source. For a network that's been historically vertically integrated, what's the role of open source and multi-vendor standards in a 5G network? So really this is about unlocking the network um, from, from an open source perspective. So bringing open source into this, particularly in an SDN controller context, means that um, the business logic or the control logic of a network doesn't now care you know, what that underlying vendor is. But also, and very importantly, it applies to the optical layer, it applies to the IP router layer, it applies to the RAN, it applies to all these different components, which in every network are always going to come from different manufacturers. So to have an ability to go have the separation of the business logic from the device control is, is, is critical and, and provides that unlocking function. How should this ecosystem look to support this new landscape that will ease the transition to 5G? It is a journey. And it's a journey that requires partnerships, uh, leveraging the best, the best of breed, um, and uh, a singular mindset to really bring software-centric mindset and architecture to the 5G networks, to be able to deliver the promise of 5G, right? So uh, we want to help our customers transition from the mindset of you know, appliance, where I see it, I touch it, I know what it does, and I can replace it to uh, a software mindset where virtualization uh, allows us to uh, harness economies of scale, consolidation, ease of you know, deployment and provisioning, uh, cut down provisioning from you know, months or weeks, et cetera, down to minutes if possible. Yeah. Um, and um, real-time monitoring and the ability to um, adjust anything bad that happens in the network in, uh, within milliseconds not hours, but milliseconds or, or better, right? So bringing that all together will require partnership with innovative vendors, the traditional you know, vendors, as well as newcomers in the space, right? And as I said again, a singular mi mindset towards bringing the value of virtualization and software-centric uh, network design to the world of telco. Everything else will become a lot easier past that. Gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Okay.